year 2003 marked the 100th anniversary of the Wright Brothers' first airplane flight near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina in the USA. However, the first human flight had been made some 120 years earlier in an invention by the French Montgolfier brothers. On November 21, 1783, the first successful flight of a hot air balloon took place in Paris. The pilot spent a total of 25 minutes footing 3,000 feet above the 18th century streets of the French capital, much to the delight of the Parisians of the time. Over the years, further developments were made to improve the design and effectiveness of the hot air balloon. However, the next couple of centuries also saw the development and improvement of the airship. These airships had sealed balloons filled with gas, unlike the open balloons of the hot air balloons that we should go on to explore. They were fully steerable and this was a great advantage as you could get to your destination with greater speed and precision. Despite these advantages, the fate of the airships as a popular form of transportation was sealed on May 6, 1937. As the German airship the Hindenburg was coming into land at a naval air station in New Jersey, it burst into flames killing 36 people. The reason for this is that the airship had been filled with hydrogen, a highly flammable gas. A small spark, possibly from the smoking room on board, sent the whole ship up in flames. Even though it's highly flammable, hydrogen is the most abundant chemical in the universe, making it cheap. The next best alternative was helium, but this was much more expensive, and being twice as heavy as hydrogen, it also did not create as much lift. Reaction to the Hindenburg disaster and the expense of helium led to the use of the airships becoming less and less common. Hot air balloons became a leading alternative to the relatively new invention of the airplane. Let's now take a closer look at how hot air balloons actually work. First let's look at what actually makes up the air balloon. You've got the big bag part of the top, this is called the envelope. You've also got the basket that hangs down from it, this is called the gondola, same name as the boats you find in Venice. Attached to the gondola is a burner. The burner burns propane gas, which gives off a lot of heat. The heat warms up the air surrounding it and this hot air expands and rises into the balloon. As the hot air is lighter than the colder air that was in the balloon, the colder air sinks and gets pushed out. The amount of cold air pushed out tells us how much lift the balloon will get. This is called Archimedes principle, and it's the same idea as the water in your bath rising by the amount of water displaced when you sit in it. In fact, three square meters of air has to be warmed at temperatures up to 120 degrees Celsius or 250 degrees Fahrenheit to dump enough cold air to lift just one kilogram. When enough lifts have been generated, the balloon leaves the ground and takes off. You can see here 106 balloons all taking off in time-lapse footage of the 2006 Reno balloon race. Notice how modern technology has moved along so that the balloons can be made in novelty shapes such as bears, bees and eagles. Obviously with the rise of the airplane, capable of reaching speeds of many times the speed of sound, hot air balloons aren't a practical means of fast transportation. However, they are used greatly for leisure activities and by adventurers. With that in mind, I'll leave you with this cool and last fact. The world record for altitude reached by a manned hot air balloon was set in November 2005 by an Indian man taking off from Bombay. He reached a staggering 69,849 feet. That's almost twice as high as the cruising altitude of a jumbo jet. Now that's fun. That's all for today. So until next time, remember, science is fun.